filter mics. Okay. Well, now we have no audio. Hello? From Erie Zone Government Access, Channel 9, from the City Hall Council Chambers, it's time once again for the Taxpayers Hotline Show. And now, ladies and gentlemen, your host... Where did DJ go? Hey, he's over there. He's checking the mics. Oh, no. Yeah, we got mics now. Over here. We got mics now. There we go. We're good to go. Mike's back. Ooh, even better, lights. DJ's not back, but Mike is. <laughs> yeah. The audio's on. The audio's well, on. Well, we're back to... The mics are off. We're back to another. Th well, I tell you, you can take Careful the kid. There. You can take the kid out of the big city, but you. You can't take the you know the city. Yeah. The big city out of the kid. Hello. It's all they're all working now, DJ. Okay, yeah, you're, you're good. Just slide back over. Man, I feel like I'm out of focus all of a sudden. <laughs> Practice all the lights. Like Mickey Mouse said, "Hocus pocus, everything's out of focus." Just yeah. close your eyes. It makes everything better. Go ask Ellis. Not with the you know the sun shining outside as well. It's beautiful out. Go ask Ellis. No. <laughs> <laughs> As she went down the hole. Yeah. Into the conscience of her mind. That cost me a lot of money to learn that in college. I don't know if it. I don't think. I don't know what it does for you though. But hey, we forgot to Keep introduce thinking. ourselves. Yeah. yeah there you go. Introduce yourself. I am the DJ. Incomparable DJ, right? I don't even know what that means. Uh, just accept it. Okay. Well, I'm Dave Paradiso. So. And, and you, hey, we missed you last. And week. I'm with the you know makerspace. So yeah. Pardon? I'm with the Erie Makerspace. Yeah, we meet. missed you though. We had, we had to hear. I had to work. You know, I have, I have to do that from time to time. Sometimes. That's okay. Do Some of us got to work. You yeah. Know. yeah. And there's retirees like me and the. Not me. I'm far Semi-retired, whatever that is. I'm never working. And I'm Councilman Kaz Kwiatkowski and DJ. Oh. You want to go over the rules again? Don't do anything. Beyond the limits of bad taste. It sounds like the golden rule almost. Yeah, don't yeah. swear, no nudity, just just keep it clean, okay, kids? Thank you. That works, general rule. Somebody was laughing back there, I don't know. <laughs> Probably Mike. He's, we're going to get Mike, one of these days I had to get Mike out front here. Yeah, get him a up. A little up. booth like, you know, like Howard Stern has or... These big announcers on ESPN. We just need to sneak a picture of them and then get it blown up to poster size and just slap it on the wall. Well, yeah, with headphones, yeah. We could also put like, you know, a camera head you know, through the door watching them. Hey, there you go. Yeah, but he's the one who runs it. You think he'll turn it on? We, we, one of the, one of the no, candidates running for office was telling me, I, I saw it in there, he's going to demand that this show goes on at night. Well, <laughs> you know. There you go. This show is run by, you know, through the auspices of the City Hall. City Hall is closed tonight. Yeah. And uh, if somebody wants to do that, all they have to do is find the funding for Mike to come in. <laughs> you know, we'll be glad to do it. But we have talked about, like, you know, you and I might go to Cat TV and do a show at night. We can give Mike a dollar and a hamster. Because that's what runs the station is hamsters and wheels. Yeah, they, they hide them up back. That's all he needs. He said one dollar and he'll do it. The old hamster rule, huh? Yeah. yeah, the old hamsters. So the sun lights out, and as yeah, as Annie would say, the sun came out tomorrow, and today tomorrow is today. If it was yesterday, you're that's all, a little full of songs. You're all about right? songs today. It sounds like you're trying to make up songs or something. I, something about asking Alice. I spent too much time on my computer watching old music. That's, that's what cool. the problem was. The hills are alive with the sound. And if you get serious, serious radio, you know, you start putting that sixties on six and. <laughs> oh yeah, all kinds of different stuff. You yeah, can make my do. head spin thinking too much. Mm -hmm. That's true. Things are making noise. Oh wow. Yeah. I'm just gonna hit buttons again. There yeah, we go. don't push buttons. We'll clear that out. <laughs> I'm I think guessing you push the button first. That's a Dave button. button. <laughs> You're bumping into the switches, man. You just, I, you just so voted no. Him and during the meeting, he always, always hits it. <laughs> I have to flick it off, but... Yeah, are, are we on? Is that phone active? Uh, let's see. Yep, we got a signal. Yeah. It's on, so... Give us a call. All we need is some callers now, right? Yeah, yeah I'll call. Let's, let's see if we have any other... Uh, what's the topic? number? 555... Five, five, five. No. No. I, I, have people, I have people come to me all over town, and I go, please call. Please call. Just yeah, do. Just go. say hello, what's you it? know. What's that number up there? I can't read it. Eight seven zero. Yeah. One, one two, two eight, four. eight four. Yeah, I don't like it. Uh, yeah, really. One eye at a time. Well, it actually looks better if I just look at one, one eye. 
This is when you know you got it. Mm-hmm. E-F-P-T-O-Z-L-P-E-D. Yeah, that's that's bad. When you memorize it. The doctors it. all know that now, so they go, yeah. I read the bottom line there, the one, the very bottom that you can't read. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. Of course, he had to memorize it first <laughs> before yeah. he sit up there. Yeah, when I was in school, I said, you know, you, you took the eye test so much, you go, E-F-P, D-O-Z, L-P-E-D. I used to know the other four lines, too, but... Yeah, well, you see it enough times, you remember it, memorize yeah. it eventually. And then they go, uh, 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 the third one from the left, from the bottom, second row up. <laughs> no, no, now I get it, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, now you get uh, it. Uh, see if I can remember that to one. work. I can't. Uh, oh, it's good guess. Good guess. <laughs> So you got anything you looked up last week? I know we're always taking notes and looking stuff up, but... We took some rides last week. It was interesting, yeah. Good. How'd that go? Did you find anything new and exciting? Yeah, there's a lot of work to be done. Uh, well, we kind of knew that. That's not new. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> cool, yeah. We've kind of known that for a while. We uh, we hooked up with... Uh, I'm trying to think, who did I hook up with last week? We are driving around and, you know, talked to a few people, mm. uh, looked at some of the issues... Any of the regulars, any of the regular callers, was it any of those folks? Yeah, well, pretty much. Took a ride up uh, well, 38th Street's really being, that's a real mess right now. Yeah, they're really working on East 38th. Yeah, let's hope, though, we that's we put right. in to have a study done for a left-hand turn lane on Pine Avenue. Oh. That's a good idea. That's yeah. a very good idea to have. But the Commonwealth, uh, they, the last time they took account, you, you appreciate this. They took a count, and we said, well, when did you take the count that said we don't need one? Hmm. Well, we did in summer. I said, hmm, summer. Let's oh. see. You know you have a college right down the road? Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever take the count during the school year? Oh, Especially in the morning when all the people come in from work and all the kids are coming into class. and That'd be an educated study, but... Yeah. What well, a whole day. I mean, a whole yeah. day, like, in the, in the, you know, you got... Right in the middle of the busy season. Who does, who does these studies? Just Commonwealth. Uh, yeah, but who was because that that's a state well. highway. That's the state, you know. The state they, itself would have yeah, they hired they hire some account. kids. Well, the, in the old days, you just hired kids, and they'd sit there and they count cars. And now they got pressure things, you know, wires. Oh yeah, as you drive over them. And I'm just nodding my head, government. I'm just like, oh man, you tell the government to do something and you'll get it done, but it just takes a while. <laughs> it'll Process. take a while and be the wrong schedule. So, but yeah, it's interesting. Uh, did you go around and you see? <clears throat> You know, a lot of, it's amazing that we just had spring cleanup. And how much stuff still left out that people are still We've turned out. into TV and couch city. That was my top comment for last week, too many couches. This yeah. is too many couches. College kids are what, coming back. I want to know. College kids are leaving. So they're they're le- they're, now they're leaving. and they're I'm going to buy stock out. in Arthur F. Schultz and uh, the, other co- the other companies are selling couches. No. The cheap couches. It's probably like the Big Lots and the you know, Oak Express. And yeah, they're the all over the place. They're growing. It's like, it's like you, you look out there and you got, now you've got TV sets growing. Yeah, well, it's because it's hard to get rid of them. I mean, we don't really have much of a place to get rid of them besides We just had an electronic pickup, too. Right. And it's after that it's actually taking it down to get rid of it. And that's the scheduling problem do. that you have to work on is, is find out why we can't move that pickup till. Well, that's because over the years, and you know, that may change with a, with a new administration. Well, yeah. But it's never changed really with other ones. The, the key it's phrase. It's always been, the, you know, they want to get started on the, the blacktop. And, the key phrase you said is over the years, and we just have to put that away and say moving forward, what are we going to do? Because that's the, different. the asphalt plants start to open up now. Yeah, right, they so go right. from cold to hot to hot patch now. Yeah, and so you know they want to get out there. There's only so many trucks. People think. Well, yeah, like like I said last week. They think though, it's like the old days when we had you know tons of people standing around. We don't. Right. I know we don't, but like no, I said last week, we, we pick yeah. one person, one truck, and dedicate it to go around and make sure the stuff's cleaned up. Then they can go back to fixing the roads. One truck. That's it. Well, you know what? You gotta, uh, that's why when, when I go out of town, I, I ask well, how they do it in their, you know, their place. Well, it's either that or have, a sta- or have a place where people can take the stuff to get rid of it besides just one day around the year. Yeah, that we, works We too. talked about there in, in Allentown, they have a recycling place, you know, and it, it, they make money off it. That's right. why i got to get more information my next trip down there. I'm mean, going to actually, you know, take a, see if I can find somebody to talk to. Yeah, some information yeah. to have a place to do that. Yeah, because that's the hardest part is like trying to, where do you take it that you don't really have to, you don't want to pay for somebody to take your, take away your big trash that should be worth something of some sort. Yep. 
Yep. What's DJ up to now? I'm taking notes. Taking notes? Yep. Here's our first caller, DJ. Hey. He's going to put you on the pre- ready? Go ahead, caller. Hey, Thanks. Good Thanks for calling. Gentlemen. Hey, Richard, Howdy. what's up? Well, I'm just listening to you, dear. That's all your wonderful jabs to each other, dear, particularly DJ. I feel sorry for DJ. Um, <laughs> just mention about the, you're going to start up the paving and that. I uh, had an experiment done on my driveway here that I would like to see if you could get maybe the city to consider trying one of their streets with this. But when my driveway was redone, before they put the top two inches of the final coat on, mm-hmm. they put a mesh down over the top of where I would get cracks. And my, yeah. And, you know, because living on a hillside, it tends to push and create the cracks. But since they put that mesh down, the cracks no longer appear, have not appeared over the last three years now. It holds the pavement in. So I'm wondering if they could try a street with a, maybe that mesh before they put the top two inches down. Yeah, I imagine it probably comes down to cost. And I, I can ask the engineer next time I see him. But I would, my guess right off the bat would be it's probably cost. It's probably, yeah, the cost of it's more than it's worth probably for them just repaying for the pavement. That's something, that, you know, what, you're, what they should have done is uh, when they when they first built these roads, that's when they should have done that, you know. Yeah, having a base underneath and having a, a lot of the roads, they're paving over the old brick roads that are still there, or the old concrete. Yeah, there, are that, some, there are some brick roads. Yeah, and they heave and move because they're all so many separate little blocks. That's a good idea, Rich. I, I'll ask them, but I, I, some tells me it's probably a cost factor. Well, that's the thing. I mean, it's going to cost a little more for that mesh. I don't know what kind of mesh it was, but I can't remember if it was wire or like a plastic, you know, like that, you know, the orange plastic fencing. Yeah, it's the old thing, though. They get so much money, and they're trying to do the most they can. Well, here's the thing, though. I mean, by doing this on maybe one of the, maybe even it's a, if it's one of the main heavier traffic streets, Yeah. experiment to see how well that mesh keeps the road from breaking up, because a lot of these things are started by cracks, and you know, when a crack creates. Oh, yeah, that way water gets in there, and if you ever notice, uh, like when they blacktop roads, there's always a seam down the middle you can't see until a couple of years later, and all of a sudden... The seam opens right up. Yeah. And that, well, that's what Erie's problem is. You know, a lot of towns, like further north you get, when it freezes, it freezes. Yeah, and yeah, they don't have constant warm and cold. Yeah, we have the thaws. You know, we we're like in that gray area where it thaws and freezes, thaws and freezes, and then you get lifting and and pop outs and. So what you're saying is this week's phrase is too many cracks. Yes, yeah, too many cracks. Underneath where the uh, maybe the bonding hasn't been completely very adhesive, so that's why I'm thinking if you get this mesh to prevent the cracks from occurring. Yeah, yeah. Because even if you create the seam in the middle. The seam is usually pretty tight, but if the netting will keep the cracks, the seam from even opening and lifting, you know. Well, if you look at a lot of the parking ramps, that's what they do in there, you know. Well, they, yeah, they, they put the expansion joints in. They used to put reinforcement rods, but now they're trying, like, mesh and everything, you know. Right. Well, the one year, remember, I don't know if you were, you weren't working but with us, but the, uh, we tried a rubber coating. Someone decided to try ground up rubber tires. and Yeah coating with the rubber tires, it was fine when it first put down, but eventually it didn't adhere to the concrete too well, and it began to lift. And well, I remember when they tried to put some stuff between the, the expansion cracks. Right. And then wound up, uh, the heat melted it, and it was dripping like... Oh, that was that through. Was, yeah, dripping on cars below. I'll tell you what they got in there now, it's an, it's an accordion tie, type uh, joint that uh, collapses and opens, you know, unfolds like an accordion. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that works pretty well as long as it's bound down on the two other uh, plates, you know, like, uh, ramp four plates, uh, well. And then, uh, and again, it's uh, designed if you somebody pokes the top layer to the bottom layer to keep it from going any further. But yeah, that would work, but that's expensive stuff too. That was uh, so much per foot, linear foot, so. Yeah, nothing cheap, but if it works, you know, long, you know, long term, that's okay. Yeah, it saves long term, it might be worth checking into at least. Well, I'll just give it a try. I just say, even if they just try one street or a section of a street that gets pretty hot, that they get quite a few potholes developing, and this would be a test to see by some chance that the potholes don't develop. Yeah, because you don't, you don't even see the state doing it, and all they do is they found out that, well, years ago they found out they can 
it's cheaper for them to grind up old road, right. remelt it with new material, and then just lay it down again. That's what they do. That's what they're yeah. doing now. Yeah. It's cheaper for cost. The main thing is depending on the base that they're putting on top of. Usually a lot of the problems is the base underneath is so bad or so cracked that it just... Well, they, that was the problem when they, when they laid I-90. A lot of people would tell you they didn't put the right base on. Right. You can see the reason why you need a good bonding between the top layer and the base layer. Uh, when you go come down uh, Old French Road right to 38th Street, right by the uh, um, by home center mm -hmm. section, right before the traffic light, has a ripple effect. Some people stop, you know, like big trucks stopping and pushing, like it's almost like pushes the asphalt ahead to create a ripple. Um, but uh, but the fact maybe this city look at some way of bonding that better than what they've been doing. So um, it's a little more durable. Well, we'll uh, hope that they can get the good bonding on it. And then, uh, yeah, you were mentioned about the couches, too. I'm thinking, you know, they added a lot of things, but what do you do with couches? Just like the beds. What do you, you know, they had all those beds piled in that one warehouse, and that wasn't a good thing. So yeah. you're not allowed to put the, any wood type stuff out there for recycles. No, because when we take it to the landfill, they don't want, you know, they don't want it. And yeah. So. The problem I have with that is wood obviously can be recycled. You take it, you break it down, you take the metal out of it, you take all the materials out. Even if you just break that wood down into a pulp, you can make paper out of it. You mean the beds? Yeah, out of the beds. The beds have wooden frames. It just having a place to build it, you know, some place that does it. need a place that does it. We need a recycle center. Yeah, we don't have any type of center. So what's an outfit that. that was coming to town that was going to talk about recycling? I talked to them a little bit about a few months ago. And they were they were talking about making a presence in Erie. That would be a good idea. I mean, it would be beneficial. Yeah. It's just having a place to do. There's that. money in it if you do it right. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just having somebody ambitious enough to do it. Well, well do yeah. You, do you remember why they closed that the, the incinerator to Erie? To yeah. the Erie had. Remember where you take and dump it down in that pit, and it then was. Yeah, if I remember right, it was uh, emissions. Well, nowadays don't we have good way to control the emissions that we? Yeah, but they they probably don't want, you know. It's probably an EPA problem. It, it They could do it again, you know, but it has to be constantly upgraded and maintained. It, it maintained. Cost of maintaining it is probably yeah, I don't, and I know how, I don't know how good those plants are anymore, Doc. You know, there used to be, oh, let's see, there was, there was one over there around Raspberry and Cranberry. There was another one, I think, off of 12th Street. Well, you remember when we worked with the parking ramp, we used to bring, like, dead critters there and everything? Yeah, we used to take a lot of stuff. I mean, the incinerator took care of those things that you really didn't yeah. want to see even in a landfill. They'd open up the hatch, and you could, you'd sit there pushing it, thinking, man, if I walk too far, I'm going down in it. Yeah, you don't want to do that. They're like big fire pits. They big were pit. literally. Well, if we wanted a good idea on how something like that could work, all we have to do is talk to Hammett. They have an incinerator. Well, yeah, but they got to upgrade them constantly. Like, right, but. The maintaining of it. It just sucks that we're in a society where everything we can't do it because it costs too much. But it's well, yeah, the hospitals got it, and so does uh, you know your your some of your funeral parlors have it. You know, yeah. hospitals do it. Yeah, they. Well, I know, like out in the country, uh, they put you know, a lot of the farms and stuff they have burning barrels. That's where they get rid of their trash. You know? Well, we used to have it in the city, but they got rid of that a while back. Right. Mainly because of uh, you know. Probably causing too many fires as well. You know, with the old structures now, you know, the sparks flying and people mm -hmm. don't... Like, you can have a fire pit. I, we'd have to have the fire chief on there explain it. Mm -hmm. You know, you're allowed to have, like, a fire pit, but controlled burning now, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But then people burn plastic and you'd have this... It'd be the different color smokes because all the chemicals coming from it. Yeah, and you'd smell it coming through your house and... Oh, oh you yeah. smell it down the road. Wherever, you know, depending on what you're burning. That's the other thing with the woods is some of the treated... Hey, thanks for calling, Richard. Yeah, you go, and maybe I'll call you back. Who knows? But I'll let somebody else call in. And uh, I like your commercial, by the way, buddy. Oh, thank you. Take care. Okay. Yeah, what did I forget? He, that's the man that we got to fix the tape recorders for. So okay. we need to get them taken care of because he calls me every week to remind me, and I can't get it done. Okay. <laughs> I, can, I was going to say something. I can take care of that tomorrow then. Yeah. I'm going, yeah. yeah. I'll drop them off.
But the whole thing about recycling, yeah, we don't want a bunch of people out in their yards burning stuff. We need a place people can bring that stuff that can be reused. Somebody can do something with it. With those incinerators, they, they funny. People used to drop things in there and you hear these cans exploding. Oh, of oh course. sure. Be anything yeah. and everything. Yeah, to be And the guys would be yelling stuff. down there, hey, you know. Yeah. I remember, like, when I was growing up, we had a transfer station up when I was, you know, towards Dunkirk, and they had this big compactor. Huge, big compactor. We'd just back the truck up to it, hmm. empty the truck into the compactor. They'd squeeze it together, put it on a semi, and then ship it out. <laughs> but there's nothing like that around here whatsoever. The only thing I know of is the landfill, and they only take certain stuff. And yeah. it's getting big. Yeah, and the landfill itself, they're not doing anything with it. They're just burying it. The mountain of garbage. They had that compact, or like you mean... Yeah, they had a bay. Like what they there was the cars with and everything? Two bays that they, you could pull the truck up. You open the bay of the truck, dump it in. You weigh the truck when you leave out. And you just pay for I the weight. Go, I remember going to the incinerators. That, that was a scary proposition. Though. You look and you go, you know, you got a fire pit like that. Looked like the gates of hell, you know. Oh, yeah, there's well, probably fire so much port. going through yeah. it. Oh. But, yeah, I mean, I know some of the trash companies, they do sort through a lot of the stuff that comes through, but they don't accept as much anymore as what they used to. Well, you know, it, it's hard to find a place to... It's Take great, it. when, you know, over the years, sometimes, re, cer, certainly, when we were kids, you could sell newspaper over the place. Big money, too, you know. Yeah, yeah. you but, can't do that anymore. Nobody yeah. really wants it. They don't, well, they used to make shingles out of it and stuff. Yeah, but, they don't do that much anymore, either. Plus, the newspaper, to, they made newsprint out of it. They we may get to a point where you just, you, you're going to have to recycle everything. You just can't keep throwing stuff away. And living on top of it, that's nasty. <laughs> I used yeah. to, when I was a kid, I used to wonder, what happened to all the batteries? Was there a big hole somewhere with all these batteries? That's well, in some places, yeah. <laughs> like the lead-acid batteries, they tear them apart and take the parts out of some of them. You mean the big batteries? Yeah, they're yeah. worth money for some of the... Well, yeah, they take the, if I remember right, they, they use reuse the plastic case, mm-hmm. but they take the lead plates out, you know, and they... Yeah. Well, they still do that, so... Yeah, so they just find a place that does that. I knew a guy in, uh, in Rochester, New York. That he he had a dump. He had his own personal private dump, and he would dig pits in the backyard. And these pits would be deeper than than school buses, filled with batteries. Because he would just go around collecting everything up, dig a pit as big as a bus, and pile batteries up in it. The well, man's name was Dwayne, and I don't think he's around anymore. But there were parts that's here bad. Where people used to just back up, and they were refilling. You know, low spots. Yeah. And they fill it with trash and then bury yeah. it on top but, of it. But now, you know, everything's under... Yeah, you can't do that no more. Yeah, you can't even dump blacktop or, you know, because it leaches. Right. Well, same with, like, concrete and stuff, too. It's harder to find stuff. But it makes for great landfill in your backyard if you got a big, deep hole. Exactly. No. Uh-oh, we lost them. Oh. Not one ring and that's it. Scared them away, Dave. Why'd you do it? What'd Come you on, do? call back, call back. <laughs> Doc, he, I, he, he hit me with a thought, and I was trying to think. Uh-oh. Yeah, that was bad. I lost it. Oh, man. I forget. What was he talking about? The old, rope? Old age buzz. Patching? The, the, the crack patching? The, the mesh? Plastic like mesh? It'll come back to you. Yeah. It'll come back to you. It was something that was right at the tip of my tongue there, and I should have marked it down here. Here we go. Oh, go ahead, caller. Sounds like you got a party in your house. That's my wife, Shelly. Uh, that's a dog. That's your dog? Yeah, Jim Thompson's. Oh, wow. Rusty. Remember that old Arab proverb, John? What's that? The dogs bark, but the caravan moves on. Yeah, my wife is flung smacking between the ears. He won't bark. Hey, I want to talk about you. We're talking about fire burn, burning. Yeah. The fire pits? Fire pits. Yeah. You know, we had to have a guy up here that had an old rim. And I called the fire department because the smoke was so unbearable. Yeah. He came down and he told the guy it was all right. Hmm. I, I'm going to have to, you know what, I, I should ask the fire, t- you know, I never marked it down. He explained to me a couple times about you're allowed to have it, it has to be so many feet away from the house, and it has to be like an approved fire pit, you know. Well, it's not a pit, it's just an old rim. Yeah, that's uh, cause the, the old, you know, but... Yeah, I know, like we used to do at the campfires. They used to make pits out of them? Yeah, we used to do it at the old campgrounds. But why does he burn every night? Uh, 
you're not supposed to. It's supposed to be the way I understand. Use. Huh? Recreational use. Yeah, it's supposed to be like you know you can burn a little bit for uh, batteries. Yeah, like ma- marshmallows and like yeah, hot dogs. Marsh- that's yeah, marshmallows. Yeah, that's what they have. The yeah, you're not supposed for. to be burning refuse in there. Yeah, it's not refuse. It's supposed to be recreational, which means you want to sit out there with your neighbors and have a little fireside chat, you know, and you're burning like wood or some, you know. But those days went out the tubes. Yeah, I mean, my neighbor does it, and, you know, it's it's great. I mean, he sits out there and... Yeah, the wind is blowing the right way. It's going up. Well, he's very cognizant. If the wind starts shifting, you know, he's, he, he knocks it off, you know. Yeah, kind of, kind of a down type thing. Like, I have a small fire pit that, you know, just for doing marshmallows once in a while or yeah. just nice and once in a while be outside. But what about us old people that are suffering from the smoke and everything else? Well, that's why they passed a law that you, you're not supposed to... Remember, we used to burn... A lot more than it was one day a week, and then well, finally... you could tell the plastic and the tar. Yep, why well, I used to remember, yeah, that... Like hell, and... That stuff come through your house and lay in there for a month. Oh, yeah, and you know, I, I, I talked to the, the assistant fire chief, and he talked, and I turned it into code enforcement, the address and everything else, and they ignored it. I'll ask him, because you know what, I asked him before, but... I'm going to see if I can get a written one so I can keep it I'm with me. I'm going to ignore paying my taxes. Well, don't do that, John. We don't, we don't need that. So, you know, I've been going over 38th Street looking at, I call it Couch Lover's Lane. Yeah, in, 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 uh, we were just talking about that. I said, y- y- you knew it was going to happen because the kids are all, the last class graduated yesterday. Yeah, you can go down 38th Street already and see bags of stuff out out, out there already. I did call the code enforcement, and I called him Friday, because uh, these kids left Friday, and unfortunately, code couldn't get to them right away, because they're not open on the weekends. They're gone. So Monday, you know, they, we went through Mother's Day with a really crappy-looking uh, Pine Avenue. Yeah. But, but the is now. But on my way into work, they, they did take care of it. So if if I guess what I got to do, I'll go around and see if I can spot some and call them in. But uh, you know the you know the primary area that's yeah, always a mess. People people can call me if they don't want to call in the code, and I'll call in and I'll follow up. I'll I'll kind of take a ride and take a look. As I spot them, I turn them in. Like I told DJ. Yeah, I, Rob and I are getting to be good friends. I saw two. I saw two. Uh, well, I got I to gotta thank him because he actually did clean this one up in quick. But, you know, the TVs are starting to reappear. And well, this one TV's been out. This is the second uh, second year now since they had their collections. You know what the thing is? They, these kids threw the... You know, it's one thing to throw on the front lawn, but they had this stuff piled on the sidewalk. Well, they, 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 they had it down in their back patios. And I'm going, how, what would happen if, you know, people want to walk? They, there are people that run at night along the sidewalk. Of course, you can't, unfortunately, you can't take, there's no way you can traverse Pine Avenue because there are no sidewalks there. No. You know, all the way, so, but. There's nowhere in the city you can diver- traverse everything because they don't enforce it. We have a, a city council that are sitting on their brains. Well, the city council passed the ordinance, John. That's a, That's what we that's the end of our, I'm not, well, I shouldn't say, I'm not looking like I'm, I'm, I'm looking for a bailout, but we passed the ordinance. The ordinance is on the book, okay? Yeah. Now, under our former government, that means, uh, and, you know, it, there, there is a political nightmare, as, as every mayor has found out, that, you know, you start playing hardball, they're all afraid of the kickback, but, hey, there, do you remember when we were kids, and who was, who was the mayor that put sidewalks in above 32nd? On the west side? Oh, was it Lou or was it Williamson? Yeah, well, I don't know. Williamson didn't get to be married to... Because when I lived on the west side, there was no sidewalks up above... Well, I think uh, Williamson got to be married, didn't he? Yeah, he did for a while. I he, graduated in 61. He was he was after Gardner and before Lou. Yeah. Do you, do you remember when he... Well, I don't know. On the west side, we had no sidewalks. Like on Cascade or Raspberry, above 32nd Street. Yeah. And, you know, and the school district got kind of mad, so they, they forced the issue in the city, lean property, and put all the sidewalks. They even paved the roads because they were dirt or tar and chip. Yeah. And, and now, you know, people, yeah, you have no idea looking at it now from 32nd to 38th. Well, I remember 38th Street was a two-laner. Yeah. It was dirt. 
But, yeah, we got ordinances all over the books. It'll be interesting now if the state forces the issue on Pine Avenue well, like, they, like they did on Peach Street, you know. Up there up in, uh, off of Quince Road. Yeah, they're, they're doing it in uh, where, wherever they pave now. They're following what they call the ADA uh, playbook, which is you got to have them. I mean, you got two people getting killed because they don't enforce it up in Mill Creek. The state isn't enforcing it. The supervisors are trying to, and the state's bucking them. I mean, you know why they're bucking them? Because they have all these state roads that would have to have sidewalks mm -hmm. for people to walk. Well, they did do it in Pine, on Pine Avenue. I mean, not Pine. Peach Street, they're doing it. Yeah, up on Peach, they do. Yeah, but they stopped down below. They stopped off of Kunz Road. Mm. You know where Kunz Road is? Yeah. That's where the guy got killed? And yeah, but I heard that they want to put it in. It's Mill Creek that doesn't want it because they don't want to assume liability. How do you assume liability if you got a sidewalk in? Well, there's... Uh, driver of the vehicle or the person... Well, they're saying that if the state puts a sidewalk in, they want Mill Creek to... Once they put it in, it's Mill Creek's baby. And Mill Creek will have to you know, be responsible to maintain, maintain it and... Keep it, keep it so up. they're not responsible if somebody gets killed there? Oh, well, the responsible person would be the, the, the operator of the vehicle. The city, the city owns a right-of-way in front of your house, which usually includes that little strip of lawn and the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Okay? They, they don't, it doesn't include the sidewalk. The sidewalk is yours. Yeah, but I think the city has the right-of-way there. They can force you to put one in. Well, they have to pay for it and lean your house. Well, yeah, but you, usually the builders will put it, if there's an ordinance, the builders will put it in, you know, in the old days, that's how they did it. But the city does not enforce their ordinances, and they let the builders get away with too much. Oh, yeah, but, I mean, if you, if you look at the old city, you know, where you and I were raised in, they all had sidewalks and curbs, remember? Well, sure, the builders put them in. But that was because that was the ordinance, you know. The ordinance said if you want to have a development... You know, you got to do this, this, and this. Well, now it does. Yeah, you have to put in streets, curbs, and sidewalks, and everything else, or you don't get the building permit. But I do think the city's right away goes so many feet from the media, the middle line, and a lot of times it does include the sidewalk. Although you have to maintain the sidewalk. That's why a lot of people think, you know, if something happens, they blame the city, but no, they're responsible. Well, all they have to do is call them and say, "Hey, my sidewalk's broke." I know that I'm supposed to put the sidewalk in. I don't have the money to put the sidewalk in. Mm -hmm. Put the sidewalk in and lean my home that I'm not going to sell anyways. Well, eventually you will. Well. Somebody eventually will. <laughs> somebody down the line will have to pay that's for why the we, lean. That's why we changed the garbage bill with the uh, refuse because that's what was happening. You know, we had all these fees building up. This cash backlog. True, and that, that's what I hope this new uh, mayor and this new city council will get on the ball and start looking at ways to get revenue. Well, well, John, actually, this council... No, a council. Yeah, but this council has talked about a lot of things. We can't get traction. Well, you have the yes boys. Well, no, the, actually, I got... We had... we. If I was to do it tomorrow, I can almost guarantee I could... There, we could pass some novel uh, tax things that wouldn't affect the, the homeowner, per se, directly, okay? The problem is you, you have to we, – we propose them, but they don't clear muster. They don't get up to the fifth floor to get down. Uh, well, they get kind of sidetracked, but I, I'll, t I'll, be, I'll tell you what we talked about. It's no secret. We talked about uh, – there's things we can't do. We can't charge a room tax on hotels. Okay, that's that's out. That's Commonwealth law. Well, that's the third class city deal. Right, and because of that, you know, we sit there and the county collects the tax on the hotels, and you know, in a short time, we're going to have at least well, we got four now for sure. Yeah. If you count the Avalon, the Cobblestone, the two that are up there, you'll have five when Nick Nick builds one, hopefully. About all these hotels that they're building into colleges. Yeah, and, and then, but then we were talking about, and it's been looked at in the past, about charging a tax. For instance, we, we got a tax on on parking, which council did. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. We got a we got a tax on uh, uh, events at the civic center and different uh, functions around town. That amusement tax, this council did that. The the garbage, uh, rev, you know, addressing that issue, this council did it. We're li- we're even looking at uh, uh, maybe taxing the college kids. Yeah, the tax ticketron. How about the how about the college kids? Yeah, well, they should. They're paying for parking and everything else, and now they're going to have rooms that they're going to be living out of. They're going to have cafeteria. They're going to have vending machines and everything else. It's time they got off that nonprofit deal. I agree with you because you know what? If you, you know, I remember I talked to some businessmen in Edinburgh, and they were a little miffed. And so was the borough of Edinburgh. They found out that the college was going to put in a. Uh, like a little development on campus, John. Yeah. And it was going to be housing, and the housing was going to be for like uh, it was going to be geared to like alumni and you know honored yeah. honored alumni and faculty, and but on this this development was going to be uh, like a convenience store and a gas station. Like Gannon College is doing, yeah. like Mercy yeah. is doing. Yeah, but they haven't gone to that degree yet. But if you did that. You think about if you're a merchant in the borough of Edinburgh. Oh, you're taking away their livelihood. Yeah, not, you know, where the kids had to drive down the road to get a quart of milk and now they can stay on campus. Yeah, then they won't, the business will stay in the campus, not at the business, mm. businesses. Like I went to, a, or visited a college in Bowling Greens, Ohio, and in the college they actually had a whole restaurant. There's like three or four restaurants, a food court. What, Duquesne has that when my daughter yeah, went there? I mean, they just got Mac- everything McDonald's. right there. They talked about that again and put like a mini McDonald's in there. Mm. You know, something like that. And put bars in too. <laughs> no, I'll get off here. I, I'll, I think, I'll listen if I, I think Notre Dame has a bar, John. Yeah, they do. I think it's like they call it to like the somebody told me it's they call it the alumni club. Yeah. Hey, but to get in there like, you know, you either better be a high roller, you know. So so where my son works, Carnegie Mellon, they have one too. They do? Oh, yeah. Was it like Club for Honored Alumni? Like Skull and Bones up at Harvard. Ooh, I seen that one when I was up there in uh, up in New England. There's a lot of that going on. So, okay, I'll get off and listen. Skull and Bones. I have a question. Yes. Garbage enforcement. So if you see garbage out and it's not supposed to be out, and I call code enforcement, and they come by, who enforces it? I mean, who makes the ticket? Well, usually uh, they'll try to... They'll try to contact the landlord first okay. and have him clean up. If not, we probably have to do it and lean the property. Go ahead, caller. Hey there, Kaz. Just want to, you brought up something I think would be helpful for the city, and uh, particularly as councilmen, uh, you could do this. But maybe you could have some prospective college student that might be trying to become an intern or a writer, you know, uh, maybe even a newspaper person. But why don't you have a column in the paper or somewhere, even on the uh, internet, of the uh, about the different city ordinances, because I'm thinking, you know, a lot of us with older people, we grew up hearing these ordinances being acted, mm-hmm. but the younger kids, they're coming up with any, no clue to where, what yeah, some of these ordinances are. I was told, and I don't, uh, at the neighborhood watch. Yeah, so I mean, the, the idea is to get them published so that these people become aware of you know, media of some sort. I, if I remember, Mercier's College told us uh, at the Neighborhood Watch meeting one night that after the neighbors complained about all this stuff that was going down to 38th Street, and Mercier's has tried to work through the problem as much as they can. I'll give them credit for that. And they did, they did tell us that they have an uh, orientation where they talk about the kids that are going off campus, they explain to them you're in a, you're in a residential neighborhood, you know, mm-hmm. you're in with regular people, you know, act accordingly, you represent the college. And I do think, I have to check with them again, but I'm to, if I remember right, they did hand them a book. And, and they, you know, with the rules and regulations of living off campus, and the, supposedly they did orientate them and tried to explain to them that, you know, there's garbage pickup, there's noise ordinances. and well, that's, that's for the colleges. I think Gannon does the same thing, that they're basically a handbook for the college. But not, but not the rental programs, you know. But I'm talking about in general for, you know, kids Just that aren't going to college even. You know, something that the people or new people that move into the city, you know, from out of state. 
yeah. town. For they everybody. Know what I don't know what the city of Erie has. Uh, maybe if you don't want to publish them, maybe make a booklet that uh, for you know, you know for the taxpayers. But the idea is to get somebody maybe to put it, you know, go through uh, kind of like the advice column for dear Halloween, you know. But this is a uh, the city of Erie uh, ordinances, and like you mentioned about fire code, what the yeah. basis it's allowed for burning, you know, yeah. in the city of Erie. So. I know when I moved in, I did, it was hard finding information just to begin with because it's not it, it's not easily accessible. I guess That's is the true. best way of putting it, is if we can make it accessible so people can know. Yeah. We're looking for what, what's allowed and what's not allowed. Well, here's the book. We have all the information on it. And no fires. Like one way, like you talked, I think, before, I think last year, about reviewing some of these old ordinances to see whether they should be removed from the book because they no longer pertain to the city. No yeah, farm we, animals. So that's really one way to go well, through the ordinances and you know, see, stuff like uh, that. clean up the book in a way and, and also to see why the ordinances need to be updated to Hey, so. DJ brought about the farm animals. We need a website that says you can't, you can have three chickens, you can't have pigs, you can't have cows within the city limit. Seriously, though, because these are legitimate. You got a lot of uh, people coming in from out of the country that want to have stuff like that, and you have to somehow let everybody know. You know, yeah, or people but it, don't want to do like a, you know, take their whole side yard and make it a garden. There's got to be a program with it, though. You can have a website. Nobody, nobody sits down and is going to read a book or maybe a pamphlet. See, we've never. Like, maybe a website. This urban garden thing, that doesn't apply like to. Yeah. Uh, you know, the single family home, like. Right. You know, you always could have a garden. Yeah. We're talking about, you know, when you start turning vast amounts well, of your acreage into farmland. You you've got to have specific set, you know. So, Cutoffs. You got to be like, okay, you can have so many square feet, but if you go above this square footage, no. That's why we're working on the the or, right now. Right, you know, but when that, when you guys state. get that done, it needs to go somewhere where people can find it. Right. Well, an like, internet website would be great like as a start. Inf- information like on the fire pits, on what kind of fire pits are allowed, yeah. how, what size, what the regulations are on it. And if There's it's not on specifically stating, I know this well, is what we're know, allowed what, to have and what we're what, not, what not the, allowed. What the what the uh, you know what a change. We'll see what happens if uh, yeah. you know we upgrade IT and put all that stuff on her. Because yeah, a lot about, of the ordinances are, you can look them up now. Right, it's just knowing right, where to look and where to find. It's hard. Them. It's hard to find things if you don't. Maybe know Maybe we need a section for homeowners. You know. Right. Well, so I mean, yeah, that would be good. Like I find, I could buy a lot of stuff on the internet, but for me, with my visual impairment and partly paralyzed arm, it's not easy for me to access the internet. So that's why you know you need to have some it's weeds. Some of, uh, like the internet would be fine because a lot of people do that. The kids do it on their phones now. Yeah, you, you, know, you got to make it so that uh, everybody. You got to make it so like you know, like Doc says, yeah. people who can't read it, then you need to get it to them in different languages. And I don't know how this can be done and rolled out, but oh it's something my. that would be. Well, I would it'd be <laughs> easiest to do like a more like a uh, internet document, like a PDF, and then have it where we'd be able to print it out. Uh-huh. It would be nice if the International Institute would cooperate with us. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. they charge. Lots of money. I'm trying to think. Last I used to, I, One bill I had at City Hall, think about this problem. We, we have police officers and emergency personnel and complaint people here to get, get questioned, right? Yeah. If they can't speak English, okay, we have some people on staff. That translators of some. Well, yeah, they 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 they've been approved. Interpreters there. And you know they get they've been approved to do this, and because because they could be called, you know. Yeah. Right. We we have them we have them available, but that covers the normal languages. I hate to say normal, but that means you know Spanish. Yeah. You know, something French, German. You know, maybe even Russian or something. But when you start yeah. getting into the vast variety of dialects now we have, mm-hmm. and when you that have to when you have to call in the institute, and this happened to my wife when she was teaching. Mm. I mean, people say, "Well, why don't you go on the internet and you know get a translator?" Yeah, you can get a lot of trouble with that because mm-hmm. there's not the translators aren't perfect, right? And if you say the wrong word, you, you know, mess up something. The different. translator might not be perfect, you know. So we have to hire. You know, we have to hire the institute, and they come in, and they're not cheap. They're like, I don't want to quote it. I, I think it was like a hundred or two hundred bucks, you know, to get them to come in. So if we book somebody at night, 
and we don't have anybody who can speak, we have to bring somebody in, mm. and we get a bill, okay? Now, if it's Spanish, there's a good chance somebody's on... I think you'd be able to do that. Yeah. But if not, then... You have or to if it's somebody. like Spanish, Polish, Italian, German, maybe, or... But but those are getting hard now, because that's not the languages that are prevalent. Mm -hmm. In the old days, it would have been, you know. So now you you got a whole different... You know, and even, even in the school district, when they send out letters to the parents, they have to have them transcribed in... That has to be, that all has to go through the, the institute or somebody. I tried it when I was on the school board. Hey, Doc, thanks for calling her, unless you want to stay on. No, I think you, what you're bringing up is another issue, too, like you say about the transcribing. Yeah. Yeah, but I think there again, we should have, uh, even with the school board, we should have, at least say, two standard languages that should be learned uh, when people come into this country. Well, we, we do teach them English, and that's what my wife's job was. But in the interim, uh, you know, you got that, that gray period where sometimes you, you, you can't, you know, you have to bring in, you got to bring in some help. But that's where, you know, we run. This is where what I'd like to do, and I tried doing it as a school director was, and I couldn't get any traction, was to take some of the kids as they got older and give them a stipend. You know, instead of paying the institute, give them a stipend, a lot less than what we paid the institute or somebody. Yeah. And, you know, of course, you have to make sure these kids are, like, you know, good and have them, you know, transcribe letters. And you can find these kids by the time they're in high school, you know, that are conscientious, they're going to go to college or, you know, they're they're really, you know, it, it, you know they're, they know English well and everything. That That is a way to save money. That's kind of what we do here. If like we got employees with skill sets, but you know, like right now, you got uh, all kinds of Mid East dialects, African dialects, and you know that's new immigration wave. And sometimes you don't have people that can speak them. You know, right? Well, that's why we we should still. I mean, all these years we always stood, uh, learned, and understood English. Mm -hmm. And everything, our signage is all in English on buildings. Uh, I'll just like for myself, when I will go down Parade Street, some of those news stores are Arabic now. I have no clue what they say or what they are. Oh, but you know what? They do speak well. But if you go to, I'll tell you what, Doc, if you go to Chicago, okay, and you go into old little Warsaw, and you don't understand Polish, and I'm not perfect on it, but mm. you could be lost there too, you know? Right. There are still some people in uh, Chicago and little Warsaw that... Uh, the older people, they do not speak English, and the younger kids will. And when I was in Poland and Germany, they were very fluent. Mm -hmm. But I, I can't say the same for our kids, oh. okay? We, we're kind of like the mutts, you know, we, we don't... Uh, you're right. I, when I was in Poland, they did speak, uh, but they wasn't American English, it was British English, but I could understand them and they could understand me. Yeah, most of them were pretty, you know, most of them were a lot more fluent than we were. Yeah. But... I'll get off and let somebody else hey. call, but I just thought maybe it, with the, you know, the idea that we have these ordinances, but I think not everybody is uh, moving into the city knows of them, or, you know, even the youngsters growing up, not necessarily learning them from school, but they, they need to be aware that they become citizens, uh, or... Maybe we just need to send a flyer out when we do our, like, recycling or something. Just a, right, yeah, I mean, you know, it'd be just a... Keep the lawn mode and stuff like that, you know. Well, not too much that. I'm just I'm looking at any of the ordinances. What is there so? Yeah. I've moved in, and it's like I, it's hard finding the stuff. I didn't know what. What was there's so, not. There's so many, Doc. That yeah. you know, you start getting into you know, uh, what you what you can put in your basement for electrical stuff, and that that gets you know. Yeah, well, I know some of them get detailed. That's why I'm saying that they, you know, like you say, maybe you need to have a site on a website or something that uh, homeowners for the city of Erie here. Well, maybe we can do that and break it down a little bit, you know. Right, yeah, have different sections on what you're looking for and information on. Here's the information on it. That might be a job Resource. for some interns. Well, that's what I'm saying. You, uh, see, because I know if I wanted right now, if I wanted to find it myself, I don't have internet access to that. I'd have to go down to City Hall, and again, I'm limited by the hours they're open. Now, being retired, I can do that, but somebody that's not retired, that live, they're trying to work for a living, they want to find out, they, they can't maybe access it because the City Hall is closed when they're available. Right. So there's, there's, a, there's a good way to try to get that out for them. But no, I'm just thinking that uh, some, maybe it, information like DJ needs to be somehow monitored and put out there, So and at the same time, we'll be able to, by downloading that information, you can find the things that Jesus doesn't pertain anymore. You know, make sure they're like cleaning up the horse apples that the horse thieves in the street. So, <laughs> so we don't want to do that. Have to do that anymore. Yep. So, all right. Well, talk to you guys later. Okay.
Okay. Yeah, Doc, thanks for calling. That kind of brings us back to what Doc brought up last week, too, was maybe possibly having a place uh, where you could have a service where people could come in and, and order things because they can't see. We you need could also have that. To take control of that. You could also have a service where people could call up and just get information. Go ahead, caller. Hey, Cass, don't you, don't you think they have the technology where you could talk into a telephone and uh, that telephone could you know, transcribe what a, a foreign person is saying? We do, but that's not perfect. You know, uh, in some you, instances, you could be ordering a sandwiches and start a war. You, yeah, you, you I, have to get the dialects. It probably does, right. but th th there's a cost factor. Who's going to pay for that? You know, it yeah. also depends on how accurate it is as well. I mean, I but, know that Google does some of it itself online, but it's, but not, it's perfect. not perfect. But yeah, I, I've I've done po I've done some, some words I looked up that were Polish, and I was surprised. <laughs> they, they did they didn't make sense. You know, uh, but I'm, I'm sure the technology is there. I mean, if, you know, even if it was a little tablet that yeah. you could just talk into. And then the tablet would just, you know, read out what this person is saying. Yeah, I'd have to talk to a linguist on that to make sure because I've been told that as good as Google is, and yeah. <clears throat> like you can go on my phone right now, and uh, I think you can. Can't? Yeah. You can, can you do phrases too? Right. Yep. Yeah. It'll read, it back. It'll read back text and stuff too as well. You can type one yeah. in, and then it'll read back. But but some words are not perfect. Yeah, okay. and the like computer. that's where diplomats get in trouble because yeah. if they're talking about uh, uh, the famous the famous uh, example that was remember the wind talkers in Navajo. Are you still there, sir? Yes, no, I, I, I'm not familiar though. Well, the Marine Corps used Navajos during uh, World War II in Korea because mm -hmm. they they had a strange language that the Japanese and nobody. Uh, you know, use them. They use them more in Japan and the war in uh, in uh, Asia. There, they could they couldn't figure out the language because it wasn't a normal language. And and the and the, uh, the Navajo had weird words like uh, a tank. There was no word, so they would use a, a, a word for turtle. And an airplane would have been a like some kind of bird. Mm -hmm. And and that was the thing that you got to be careful. When you're transcribing things, if there's a if there's a word that's absolute, you're okay. But if there isn't, then somebody has to come up with a word and put it in context. Yeah. And sometimes the the uh, the uh, phone or the computer doesn't pick the context up. Right. The word could have like two or three different meanings. Yeah. For the same word. Half the time it doesn't like that. know what I'm trying to say. I'm, I'm driving down the road and I just tap the phone. I'm not looking at it, but I'm speaking a phrase. And then yeah. when I get a response from my friend, they're like, what the hell were you saying? And it comes off garbledygook. So it, it can't even understand English half the time. But I, I think, sir, like, you know, I, I, what I would like to do is I tried it on the school board in one work, but I'd like to have, like, maybe so, so, so many citizens that we can call in at a cheaper rate and either like give them a little, a little bit off in their taxes or something. What do you think about that idea? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, well, I mean, well Cass, before we go, here's my real question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, do you remember back in the day we had, it was like a two bag limit for picking up garbage? Yeah. Before that was enacted when you had unlimited. Yeah, now we're unlimited. I don't remember when that was though. I remember when I was a kid, it was like two bags. Yeah, and then but then there was such an outcry because the taxes were going up that then they said, well, it would be unlimited. But the sad part is for a lot of the... Since if you're trying to save money, how can you say unlimited? Well, I think they found out that... Well, if you take my mother on the average, my mother puts out a bag that's hardly worthy of anything. And then you look at me, I, I'm lucky I can fill up one bag now because my kids are all gone. And in a bigger family, sometimes you have three or four. So I'm sure, you know, they must have done a study and they figured out that on the average, you know, uh, some people aren't. I mean, I don't even put out two bags mostly unless it's my kids are visiting me or it's Christmas time or, you know, something like that. But and my mother, she puts out. Yeah, one small little bag. Yeah. <laughs> Well, for nowadays with recycling, I mean, if you have two bags of garbage that re you recycles, you should be fine. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Every I mean, visit this and, and you know just keep it in two bags like the way it was. I mean, I, I go down my, my street and I don't really see any abuse. Even amongst families that got kids, they might have on the occasion maybe three bags, but 
you know, nothing really, you know, outlandish. Not in my neighborhood, but I can, you know. There's still a lot of people who don't recycle, guys. I got neighbors who don't. Oh yeah, there's well, people don't want to take the, you know, they don't, they don't want to be bothered. Time. Well, it's just easier and cleaner. I mean, it's just, uh, uh, yeah, I don't understand. Well, what they don't understand is uh, we. We actually get money back, and we don't get as much money as we should get back because we don't do the recycling ourselves. But because we depend on, you know, at the transfer station, what it does, it lowers our cost a little bit, what we have to pay the landfill. So that's how we get our money back. So the more people to recycle, you know, the, we, we get a percentage of that back. Now, if we, uh, Mark, Mark I. Finley used to talk about, if we would have done it on our own, We'd have made more money. Some communities do that. They actually, you know, they, they sell that, and that, that, that goes as a revenue. So I know some trash places where they actually will separate the trash themselves as soon as we can. Oh, yeah. People they, that don't recycle, they just empty the There's some, some places where they bag. bring out the canister, you put all the stuff in separate. Yep. Hmm. But, yeah, I remember that was true. Of course, I remember when you used to pick up your, your garbage cans in the back of the house, too, though. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yep. <laughs> Those days are gone. Hey, no, one more thing. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Can you do anything about an abandoned boat in my neighborhood? An abandoned boat? Uh, an abandoned boat, yeah. It's in somebody's highway, and it's just a... Uh... Yeah, they're supposed to be... I don't think they're supposed to sit there forever. How big is it? It's been sitting here forever. Uh, do, you, do you want to give me an address off the air? Or? Uh, no, I'll tell you right now. It's fine. It's, I'm not sure the actual address, but it's Fourth and Euclid. Fourth and Euclid? Yep, can't miss it. Is it the only boat if I took a ride down there, it'd be the only one? It would be, well, it's more on 4th Street than Euclid. Hmm. You know, because their house is right on the corner. Okay, but it's on the corner? Yeah, it's on the corner of 4th and Euclid. You okay. know where the Barber House is, down there on 4th and Sanford. I'm sorry, what was that? The Barber House? Yeah. On 4th and Sanford? Hmm. It's near there? It's like, it's like right behind, yeah, it's like back in there and almost in their backyard. So I, I would have no trouble spotting this boat, though. Yes. How long was it there for? Down there. It's been there for 10 years, Dad. 10 years? Because Did... the tarp is just shredded. Oh, yeah, see? You're looking for a boat. Yeah, there you go. And it is just shredded off in pieces. And... Yeah. I, I have to check the ordinance again. I remember what cars it was mm. that you could have a car stored there as long as you had, you know, it was properly registered and... And you know, had a plate, and it, you know, it, the tires weren't flattened. And I would think a boat should fall under that because it's a form of transportation. Well, I, I think we do have ordinances on you know yeah. how you can store these things, because otherwise. Well, that's the other thing is people don't know about some of the ordinances. That's why. Yeah. Well, it's still there. They do, and they. Do. I mean, some people do, some people don't. Yeah, you got to know that storing an old car there is not right. Okay. It would be common yeah. sense. Yeah, you would yeah. think. I had them where they had trees growing up in them, and birds and animal critters were in there. Yeah, it's a home away from home for some of these people. You know. Because nobody knows what to do with them. You know, they don't have the money to haul it out. I'll look into it, okay, sir. Yeah, but I mean, um, if it looks like an eyesore, don't they have to just use their judgment and say, "Hey, this thing's got to go"? Yeah. You yeah. Would think. You would think, but you know. Especially, you know, usually, you know, some people keep it there and they take it out once in a while. That's okay. Or a lot of people put their cars up in the winter. That's all right, you know. Well, or, or maybe you have an extra car. But if you take care of it and it runs, you know, sense. nothing says you can't have it in your driveway, you know. But when they don't operate, they, 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 they have moved in 10 years. Yeah, and registration's <laughs> gone. and They're just adding to right. This is a house on the corner. Yeah. I believe it caught on, it was caught on fire, we remember years back. Yeah, well, we had another one where people... We're home alone. Do you remember these storage sheds they buy and they rent? Yeah. I had, I had complaints on something like that, too, where the, the uh, storage unit never went away. Mm. And the neighbors are going, you know, i got to look at that. I look out my window, I can't see anything but that yeah. ugly storage shed, you know. Yeah. But, yeah, what do you call that, that box thing where they never pick them up like... Yeah. Well, there's I've some there's it. some companies like Pods, yeah, stuff yeah. like that. But see, we got rules against that because you know. Yeah. Well, Kaz, this this could be. I think this is a hoarder house too. Oh. Because it's it's bad. And see, this is what people get mad about when we talk about blight, and they go, you know, it, you got to start one house at a time. Yeah. Because you know, if you see that, and somebody else goes, well. 
Why, why am I going through all the trouble? I might just leave my lawn grow or yeah. why should I fix my window or, you know. People got to realize it's, it's up to the people. If they don't want to see that own, you know, their own, you know, yard looking like that, then clean it up. We you have to empower neighborhoods like a little clean bit more up. than we do. Yeah. You know, like the neighborhood watches are a good idea, you know, because they get a little traction with the police and code. Yeah. If, if they're good neighborhood watches, you know, if they're, you know. Right. It also depends on the neighborhood and what else is around, too, because I yeah. know some of the places, like, they don't care about their houses. They don't care about what it looks like. They're just there to have a place to sleep. I mean, I wouldn't be happy with a boat sitting there all day, you know. No. Yeah. Well, if you... oh, this is, well, I mean, we do have a Lakeside Association down here, but I don't, I'm sure it's been complained about, but. Well, yeah, I'll check and see if there's ever been a complaint on it. Hey, clean up your act. I don't know. Hey, is... I, I remember a buddy of mine years ago. He had a uh, he had a van with a name on the side, and they kicked him out of their neighborhood. They really they said that's not acceptable for our neighborhood. You know, we don't want a paint truck or a plumbing truck, and you know. That kind of gets a little excessive. It's That's something. really excessive. It does, but it goes to show you what can be happen when, you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, it also depends on the neighborhood and the yeah. people that are there. You can't make everybody happy, but you don't want a, a dump either. So No, but we got to, you know, you got to get rid of stuff when it's old. Yep. All right. Yeah. Yeah, if you take a ride by that fourth and you would, I'll call back in a couple right. weeks and we'll see what you think about it. If I don't get there it? today, I'll, I'll certainly get there sometime this week. How big is it? Can I tow it away with my car? <laughs> Well, we have more of a trailer that has flat tires, I believe, too. What, what is it, like, a, like a, a small motorboat or like a cab, a cruiser? Probably, uh, probably yeah, probably a 20-footer with a trailer. Mm. And it's got like a little cabin on top, maybe? Or? Well, not really. It's oh, probably not like that open. big, but it's probably like a small motorboat. Boat. Yeah, 20, probably 15, 20-foot yeah. with trailer, flat tires. <laughs> and... Flat tires, there you go. Right. Yeah, we pull it out, we can fix oh, it. Oh, flat deal. tires, it's not being towed. DJ will put machine guns on or a fire, big fire hose or something. Something with it. <laughs> but thanks for calling. we got to get out of here. Yeah. The whole house needs the best behavior because I believe they're horrors. Oh, I'll take a look at that. Well, well, we'll actually take a look at that and see. There's a lot of places that are like that, I've noticed. This house is a treat, Kaz. You'll... Pardon? This house is a treat. You'll, yeah, you'll get an eyeful. Oh, <laughs> goody. Yeah, we had one down my block that was in a fire. Thank God they finally, after two years, fixed it up. Oh. I know I know what you're going through, so yeah, I'll check it out. <laughs> the worst in the neighborhood, easily. No yeah. problem. It's the worst. Yeah, hey, maybe you know, I might be out and about tomorrow a little bit, so maybe I'll take a ride down there. Yep. Yeah, or next time you go down to Ricardo's, it's right down the road from there, so Yeah, I was just there, so I get why well, I, I got I got stuff I have to do tomorrow anyway. It's a busy day tomorrow. So I'll probably be driving around somewhere and I'll I'll take a ride over there. Hey, did you have one more thing? Did you see their uh, building on the old McDonald's on uh, Franklin and East Lake Road? No, I didn't. What are they building there? I don't know. They tore it all out and they're pouring concrete. Ooh, that's good. Maybe yeah. some something's going in there then. Yeah, that's, well, that's, I don't think that's on city property. That's probably, well, what is that? Lawrence Park? Yeah, that's Is it on the other yeah. side of Franklin? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's kind of like on the other side of Franklin. I think Franklin is a boundary, right? I thought it was, yeah. It goes Bird Drive, Franklin. Yeah, um, it's probably in Lawrence Park. Yeah, because Bird Drive is the Erie limit. I know that. Well, it, yeah, but then it... Then you got, what, Harbor Creek? just opposes up north to Franklin Lawrence Avenue. Park and then, oh, okay. Yeah, you're kind of crooked on the east side. It's not a straight line. Who draws these lines? Why can't we have straight lines? When because it comes when, to they, when they when they when they access when, when they annex property. Yeah. If you look at at the southern extreme, there's like a little thing that sticks out there. Where all right, we'll we'll go into more of this next week. I don't want to yeah. ask. Hey, anything. thank you, sir. We're out of time. <laughs> Thanks for calling. You might want to busy that out before anybody. Yeah, we have a we actually have like done. a little piece of land <laughs> where do we have the small little one at the, the tower up there in Peach Street. And it's like, if you look on a map, you go, why did they do that, you know? Yeah. That's why they annexed it in. That's why they did Well, we're going to talk more trash next week. I mean, literally right, trash right. and garbage, because I got some locations. One man's trash is another man's treasure. There you go. DJ, no, DJ hoard? My hoard? Up. I hoard things. Well, that's the other thing I was questioned about. Maybe we'll talk <laughs> no, about next week. No more questions. Was, you know, there's a lot of people that do hoard stuff. If you have garbage, throw it out. Don't leave it in your there backyard. Houses. Don't leave it in the front yard. Don't throw it in your neighbor's yard. I, I have was a very a specific thing I'm going to talk about next week. I was in a hoarder house. But not right now. Next week, next week. <laughs> I was in a hoarder house where I needed night vision goggles 
and a compass. I actually have both of those things. We got, we got to say. goggles and compasses, but we're going. I, I got we're lost going. on the first I'm floor. throwing my garbage out right now. I missed. Let's go. That's a litter in law. Oh, I missed. I'll pick That's it up. The Shut the cameras the off. Fade to black. 39-5 as amended in 1978. Your guilt. That's a $5 fine. That should be on the website. We're going to you're gonna have to go pay this now. Like, here, take my phone. Goodbye. Boy, this went nowhere today. <laughs> there we go. No, we're done. I, fade oh, to black. Circles. It's Don't over. Circles. <laughs> the circles upon circles upon circles upon circles. Now, in the city, do you want to Ladies and gentlemen, you have been watching the Taxpayers Hotline Show on Erie's own Government Access Channel 9. Okay,